we head into the world of Marvel Cinematic TV Show Universe. So I guess the MCU, Again. Marvel Television Universe, prior to uh, Disney Plus ruining everything with all their shitty shows. Yeah. When there were still good shows, Sands, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Iron Fist, yeah. We don't talk about those. Those were just like, those were supplementary content. Okay? <laughs> I mean, you got this Daredevil, Jessica Jones, though, to make up for it. And Defenders. Defenders was Defenders, good. yes. Also Defenders. Yeah, I, just, I, I didn't just, check that one out, though. Those two, we pushed them in a corner. <laughs> Shun, the, the corner of shunning. Yeah. How dare you ruin Mark Netflix's reputation. <laughs> I was, remember when Netflix was making good stuff? That was a good time. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right, so we're watching Punishers featuring Johnny Burnthesey, who from Walking Dead fame. You may remember him as Shane or cop slash military guy number three in every other favorite <laughs> movie you ever have. Absolutely. So, we won't, I guess we can't wait, wait, wait any longer. <laughs> Jesus we Christ. We gotta get into our review of the season. <laughs> Dubois. <laughs> That's so stupid. That was so dumb. No, no, Come no, on, man. no. That was a buddy transition. No, 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 no. No. All right, so we watched Punisher. I have some bones to pick with people here. Okay. Okay. You fucking lied to me, Eli. Why? You pitched this show to me. Two years ago when we watched Daredevil at this point, feels like two, maybe three, I don't know. Yeah, you were two. like, man, this is like Daredevil, but faster paced. Oh, yeah, I did. I did lie. <laughs> well, Daredevil was pretty slow. This is, was also pretty slow to begin with, I will admit. Man, the first six. Six, yes, man. I agree. That's also yeah. exactly what I have in my notes. I have two notes up until episode six and a shit ton after that. They should have oh. just called it Punisher and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends featuring the Punisher, like, for real, like, he was barely there for, like, the initial point of it. Yeah, I do agree with that. And then the plot points were predictable as hell. Like what? I knew Billy was a bad guy from episode one. I mean, one. that's fair. He yeah, looks like a bad guy. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I personally, the first time I watched it, didn't expect him to be as bad of a guy as he ended up being. I did. <laughs> like, I, told, I talked to Tristan... A couple days prior to me getting to that episode in a car, I said, yeah, man, I'm like episode five right now. And I described to him exactly what happened. Didn't I, Tristan? Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you expected him to kill his family, bro? Yes! I said literally Bruh. he was in on Cerberus. He knew everything. He was part of the team that took down his family and everything like that. I literally said it all. I, I don't did. know if I'm just big brain or the show's tiny brain. <laughs> I, maybe I'm tiny brain. I don't know, but I didn't see that coming the first time. I will say it, it made. So the thing with that is, it's predictable, but writing wise, it made sense. Like you're not going to write four plot lines, right? There was four at the beginning yeah. part. Yes, it was Punisher's plot line, Nadani's plot line, yeah. Billy and yep. Lewis, right? Yes. I instantly saw. I was like, all right, Billy and Lewis are going to be bad guys. Already well, off the Lewis top. was an obvious like Billy too, but Lewis was the obvious like, oh, you have mental issues. Well, Billy like, kept saying some fuck shit every time. Yeah, that's hundred. He kept saying Afghans. Yeah, all they do is kill each other. I'm like, you, you're not a good guy. You can't be <laughs> yeah, that. yeah. Well, the other Lewis was troubled, so I at least gave him like a pass. I knew he was gonna be a bad guy, but you know, he had he just had a rough time. <laughs> That's true. Dude, he it's it's not like he had much guidance, bro. Fuck that big dude, bro. <laughs> Connor. Yeah, it's that idiot. dude. That what dude, a fucking oh moron. Gosh. Absolutely. They gave that dude the Puerto Rican stabs to the stomach. Like, Good, dude. Luis was not playing with him. He stabbed him once. And I thought, okay, I, he got his ass. And then he pulled out and said, thaw, 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 thaw. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> gave him the Puerto Rican stabs. What the hell? <laughs> Look, I didn't like Lewis. I'm going to start off with that. No, no. The Lewis plotline angered me. It wasn't... You felt no sympathy to Lewis? Um, I felt sympathy, but that's part of why it pissed me off so much. Is like, I, I just didn't... I didn't like his character. Not that they didn't do it well. I just... It, it annoyed me and pissed me off. Partially because I know it's a thing that can and does happen. Um... With you know, so for some for some external reasons, 
Uh, I did not, I did not like Lewis or that plot line all that much. When it comes to Billy, um, I'm in between you guys on whether I saw it coming. He looks like an asshole. Yes. Right. He so looks that's like pretty the obvious. Dude from Hunger Games. Remember the uh, Seneca Crane? Yes. No, yeah, no the yes, Game Master? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying there. I see what you're saying there. I I saw him through and through. I was like, going crazy. I said he looked a little too clean to be a hero in this story. The thing of that shape up on his beard was too good. Dude, it's nice, bro. Yeah. That, line, that line was crisp. The thing about Billy is that I've seen that character multiple times. Anytime there's military guys that come home, there's always one of them that somehow turns to some dark shit. Uh, and that's what we. But he get. didn't turn though; he already was. Well, yes, but you know, part of it because Big Pun was a part of it as well, and so you know. But whatever. he didn't know the inner workings. Right, Billy knew everything. Yeah, yeah. So, but there, like, there's always like Pun didn't know that they were shipping the 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 what was it fucking heroin. heroin. In the bodies back home. Like, he didn't even know that part, but Billy knew that part. Right. Yeah. But there's always one of them that turns. There's always one. Yeah. When it comes Uh, to soldiers coming home. There's always one. So it's just like, I've seen that enough times that I kind of saw something like that coming, but I didn't guess it exactly. So that's why I say I'm in between you two on Billy. uh, Because I could tell that something was going to go crazy. I just wasn't exactly sure how it was going to work. Well, yeah, I mean, I, that's what I said. I, I, I honestly, I mean, you could tell he was a bad guy from the beginning. That's not, I'm not arguing that. I'm arguing that I didn't see coming, like, how bad he got. Because he ended up being basically the big bad in the show. Um, where he was the guy basically calling all the shots, even if he wasn't that person in charge. As that's we fair. saw later. Because um, my notes exactly say Billy just looks like a bad guy. If y'all didn't think that, y'all tripping. He makes it seem like he's real cool to down, or it, he seems like he's cool and he's down to ride for Frank. But he's a little too clean looking to be a hero. The slick back hair and the trim beard told me otherwise, buddy. I know a rat when I see one. You dirty rat! <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I just I highly I just saw it coming, and I knew because of writing, like writing structurally. It makes sense to build up your villain, not just have him appear. I think that they should have, they could have canned anything solo, Billy. They probably could have canned and just used Nadani, and it would have been a better twist and less foreseeable if they did it like that by having him intertwine in his her storyline instead of giving him his own storyline because that's a little too obvious. Like Lewis was like very obvious he's gonna be a bad dude just because of everything going on. You got the dude with the stolen valor, everything like that. Like it just it made sense. And uh, Billy just was a little too hand fisted for me to like beat me over the head that it was he was gonna be Cerberus bad guy number four. At least we got a, like a pretty villain though. A lot of times you know when they want to characterize what? villains. Listen, hey. hear me out. Hear me out. A lot of times when they make villains, it's some ugly dude just to portray how gross and evil they are because they associate I feel the complete opposite <laughs> I feel like every time they get you, they get a pretty guy because people can rationalize by hating someone better than them yes you don't want to punch down like they can't make a villain fat it's <laughs> like haha fat man <laughs> <laughs> well look at the You're penguin like, fuck that fuck that buff guy fuck that pretty dude but the pe- people punch down on the penguin no one takes him serious Eh, that's true. Name one, that's a name good one point. fan that's like, oh shit, the penguin. He's about to yeah. fuck some shit up. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Never. Yeah. Like, I you guess. have to make these guys serious. The most say, impressive ve- villains are like Deathstroke and shit. Like, Fisk is different because he's physically imposing. He is. He is. He is very physically imposing. Like I said, so you got to make them like have a, a, a something that the average person can't have, right? Whether yeah. it be size, strength, or appearance, something like that, to make it be like, I hate that guy because I envy them kind of thing. Shit. It I mean, depending sense. depending where season two goes, Billy may not be so pretty anymore. I I mean, I you looked this thing up. up. I was trying to look up the cast and shit, and they had him written down as Jigsaw, and I was like, Hey, jigsaw. don't spoil it, bro. I don't know what a Jigsaw is, but I've seen that's from the comics or something. But I, know we were I mean, it's obviously games. he's going to come back, though. Yeah. <sighs> Bubbly. Can't yeah, shout, shout out to Billy. Uh, what else do I got? Oh, David Lieberman. I enjoyed Lieberman. He was a great foil to 
DD or not D. I'm sorry. We're watching Big Pun. When he's a great foil to Big Pun. He was <laughs> amazing. He was funny. He was likable. I like that he was recluse while Big Pun's very much in the field. You always got to have the guy in the chair the archetype. The guy in the chair, yeah. dude. Yeah, <laughs> the Every guy time. in the chair. I said, I, very early, I said, what point uh, in spying on your family do you see some absolute demon time shit on accident? I It was coming, and I felt it coming for a while. Yeah, uh-huh. Like, every time Pete and, and Sarah <laughs> were on the same screen together, I actively would have to turn it off and watch those <laughs> five-minute segments over the span of 45 minutes. Like, it was, like, so cringe for me. I was like, oh, oh, he's watching, he's watching. And I knew it was building up and building up. And I even talked to Tristan about this as well. I was like, dude, it's going to happen. He keeps watching. They're going to fucking do something. It's going to be weird. And then they lead up to that moment where, you know, she's sipping down rosé. You know what I mean? Shit. Big pun, big wine mom guy. Hey, dude. But, but she gets all frisky with him. So it starts kissing him. And he's like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Soldier, step down. Step down. <laughs> he said, like, we don't do that here, soldier. And that fucking... Big David gets crunk at the at the fucking dude. Uh, dude, holy shit, bro! Office. That scene was hilarious, if also a little bit uncomfortable. I, I just, might, I wasn't that a might fan. have been the combination of the most uncomfortable and <laughs> yeah. actually not cringe in the new sense of the word. I mean, legitimately cringeworthy to I didn't want to watch it anymore. Exactly, because, like it felt uncomfortable. And then he, they, they start drinking. He's like, you want to fuck my wife, Frank? And I'm like, what is this guy talking about? And he said, you know, I got a big dick, Frank. You know? He started pulling his pants off, bro. I know, he said bro. he was going to fuck him in the ass. And then he starts shaking his ass in front of Frank. He's like, you want to fuck bro. my ass? <laughs> like, I, 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 Shit was me. insane, bro. What the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> this dude, I was also a big fan of Lieberman, dude. <laughs> that guy was that was awesome. probably the only time I was like Lieberman sucks <laughs> or like chill out boy. See, I didn't yeah. even I didn't think he sucks, but I was I, I agree. I was like, yo, pump the brakes, buddy. I gotta give hey. a shout out to um Truck Coon for almost claiming another victim in this se- season when Lieberman slammed the fuck out of Nadani's car with a truck. Truck was coming for vengeance. Almost killed her. <laughs> Sorry. Go Fair. for it. Go for it. <laughs> oh, I was just, to your prior point. Uh, I was going to say if uh, John Bernthal is in a show, just assume he's going to try to fuck somebody's wife. Cause hey, that's, that's true. That's true. She hit. Two he people's, okay? Two, he's trying to fuck yeah. two different people's girls in yep. this damn show, okay? Yeah. First, he wants to do this with goddamn fucking Sarah Lieberman. Then you're going to try to pull this shit with Karen Page. Who the fuck do you think you are? She's a is? shark is who he is. No, the real shark is over in Disneyland currently. All right. That dude, he fucked Karen. He fucked Electra. He fucked She-Hulk. All right. That's you want to talk fact. about sharks? No, you're right. You got to go look at the shark. Real, the real sharks. You're right. Okay? You're right. But that's because you know, he ain't man. have no one. The only reason that Big Pun is not as big of a shark is because he just missed his wife too much. And he loved his wife. I'm pretty sure Big Pun doesn't have a penis. What? <laughs> What? I'm, what? I'm pretty sure. Because when fucking Learman asked him, do you miss a sex? He's like, no, not really. <laughs> Maybe she was just very trash. I don't know. Yo. Like, no. Dude, he was it, dreaming it, it, of it. He was literally dreaming of it. Yeah. So? If, if Daredevil is the shark, right, then Lieberman definitely a minnow, bro, because this dude had the live action instant replay on the kiss that fucking Big Pun had on his wife, bro. bro. Big Pun this dude was replay. paused on that. On the I know, dude. <laughs> and then not only does Lieberman do that, but then he goes ahead and like nuts in 35 seconds with his wife later. Like, that was probably the most bro, unnecessary I scene know. of the season. Sorry. It was very <laughs> unnecessary, but like, I get it. The kids, the kids were right there. Mm-hmm. You're in a tiny hotel style room mm-hmm. in New York, so you already know that shit's like 300 square feet. And then you have the audacity to be moaning in the closet. Hello, hey, bro. I don't know, bro. They call him micro for a reason. Yo. All right. So Luis ends up being a bomber because that makes sense. That was well, bananas. He escalated very quickly. I mean, it would have made more sense for him to get up close and personal, being a soldier and all, but you can't have two of the same archetype, and they use that yeah. up close personal with Billy. That's so, fair. You know, 
it was whatever. I like the Lewis archetype just to give a shout out to soldiers with PTSD and struggling to come home and stuff. So yeah, I guess I appreciated that. But then you villainized him by turning him to a terrorist. So that was like, okay, I don't. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, you kind of fucked that, that one. Was, that was where my issues arose as well. I don't, I don't remember what in the Curtis plotline I said this in, or sorry, in the Lewis plotline I said, but I said Curtis the hardest one out. I don't know what he did. I don't remember. It was very early, but he uh, is the hardest one out. Was it after he survived getting beaten with his own prosthetic leg? It's probably when he tried to fight it was probably Lewis around with that. his own leg, and he was winning until he ripped the leg off. <laughs> Dude, then, that then bitch, he was made, bitch made. <laughs> He stayed winning till people attacked the leg, bro. That's fucked up. That's just cheating and shit. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta. Be, it's like what's that? What's that fucking saying? Like, you gotta fight a one-legged dude in the ass-kicking contest or whatever. Oh, oh. something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was it. Hey, two times, two times this dude got taken advantage of because <laughs> he only had one leg, bro. I'm sure he was just big, big mad at Big Pun for taking his leg. <laughs> you want to see me say something controversial really quickly? Oh, okay. Boy. So later in the season, they they end up kidnapping Sarah and Leo. No, I'm sorry, Sarah and the boy. But Leo ends up getting away, uh, and then they do a trade off where they had gas canisters attached to you know the wife and the child, mm-hmm. and they yes. you know they trade themselves in, and then the you know the FBI rolls in, and they start shooting people, mm-hmm. and then I I predicted this as well. I don't know if you guys did at all, but so they get big pun in the van. Yeah, they got Lieberman. They're trying to escort him out. It's two guys holding him, and here it comes. You ready for this controversial statement? Uh huh. They tried to Pat Tillman him. You guys remember Pat Tillman? Ah, uh, I do yes. remember Pat Tillman. You remember what Pat Tillman died from? Yes. Uh huh. Self uh, or friendly, friendly fire? fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they tried to Pat Tillman David Lieberman. That's what I wrote down. Instead, I was like, did they really just fuck up and Pat Tillman this guy? And then I started rationalizing in my brain right away. I was like, well, first off. No, they didn't. He's alive. Yeah. Right. The, the first thing I said was there wasn't enough fanfare for his death. The only person who really reacted was her, Sarah. And she was like, no, no. And it wasn't really played up at all. They didn't zoom on his body or anything like that. Two, there's no fucking way in any God shapes on earth that Big Pun would bring fucking David there without a bulletproof vest. That was or one for yep, himself. Yeah, That's what I exactly. thought. Was, I was like, yeah, he was he was definitely wearing a vest. He's fine. Speaking of bulletproof vest, bro, I don't know what kind of shit Big Pun got on, bro, but he taking bullets like fucking the Hulk, bro. That's a fact, it's, it's, honestly. It's actually the skull. Like, if you paint the skull on, <laughs> it gives you plus 15 armor. Which, oh do we explain why he keeps painting this fucking skull on his gear other than to have Republicans get a little logo that they can jerk the little tiny See, micro See, I, I really, really, really tried to just escort that out of my brain while I was watching this because, you know, I, you I don't want... You can't, man. They I know. Ruined dude, they punish- ruined it bad, dude. I don't... God, it man. sucks. I, honestly, it sucks. Go fucking pick, like, a shit... Go pick, like, Superman or something. Go pick take Iron hero. Fist, bro. <laughs> yeah, go go to Iron Fist. He's gentrifying martial arts in China. Go make it, like... Oh, never mind. I'm, never mind. I can't Whoa. say that. <laughs> I can't do it. Man, come on, dude. Go fucking, go get Ant Man, bro. Take uh, Ant Man. Take bro, Black get Star Lord. Chris Pratt sucks enough as it is as a human. Star Lord's not bad. I don't think Chris Pratt is that bad. I think people are just mad because he cheated on his wife. No, so Chris like, Pratt does yeah. some pretty terrible things. And he does. He follows the church, which you know. And boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh I had a note before uh, Madani found out that Russo was bad. I said, Russo's the kind of boyfriend that girls have when they're like, yeah, like, I know he's bad and he, like, you know, kills people, but there's something about him that I just love so much. I can fix him. <laughs> I can fix him, bro. It's okay. Just, you know, he just did a covert op to murder a bunch of people and torture them and sell drugs to Americans, but it's okay because I can awesome, fix him. Awesome, dude. No, see, it's the bro. Most, it, it's the most I can fix him shit ever. At it's first, awesome. at first, I thought she was just trying to play him. Like I thought that she was just trying to get some info out of him. And then you know, when I realized she first, wasn't, then when I realized she wasn't, I was like, "This suddenly sucks." I did not so like Madonna most of the season. I was gonna say I actually like Madonna. I did not like her most of the season because that pissed me off so much, and she was just so dumb for that. She just felt so incompetent the entire season. Like, she couldn't yeah. get anything done. I it's agree. Fair. 
I, I'd she say keep getting shit handed on a platter by big pun Lieberman and shit. That is that is true. Yeah. She gosh, and then and she, she got my guy killed, bro. Poor yes. Sam. Yes. I see. Sam I didn't really fuck with Sam, bro. I didn't fuck what? with Sam, bro. You didn't like him, bro. Nah, I wasn't a fan. If I'm gonna be he honest, he was the bro. only one actually doing his job. That, like, that is true. He was trying his heart out, bro. But and it cost him he had, no, his it, life. Yeah, I don't know. There's no reason for me not to like. Honestly, I think I did. I did like him the first time I watched this. I just knew he was gonna die, so I put just no like. I don't know characterization into him because I knew like oh he gonna be gone pretty soon. Hey, can we yes. can we real fast discuss how Billy came home from war? And Assassin's Creed must have just come out, so he decided to start playing it and made it part of his whole personality as an operative. Dude. I will say, I, I'm going to defend this. Uh, you what do you guys mean by can, that? The Hidden Blade? That shit was uh, dope. It was, that dope. was sick, I mean, though. I'm, no, I'm not going to yeah. lie. It was dope. I was just like, <laughs> what are we getting a Hidden Blade for? I'm not going to argue the action scenes because I think the art action scenes in Daredevil are so much better because they're one cut. Yes. Agreed. Be- exactly. Thank you. I watched this the whole time. I was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, the, the, there's a bunch of shaky cam, a yes, bunch of cuts. a lot of cuts. A lot of cuts. And I was like, none of this even, I don't know. He might have been injured. I have a feeling he was injured on the set of this, at least. I can't tell or you know provide a distinct answer for that. But it's just a lot of the action stuff, they purposely were cutting away and using a stunt double. It yeah. was very obvious for it. Versus I, that scene. I went back and watched the prison scene from Daredevil season two. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, and I was like, you look, there, there's not Just, a lot of cuts. Yeah, day and night. Most most of the action involves John Bernthal because you can see his face, unless they CGI'd his face on. You can see his face. So I would have to assume that he was injured or they just did not have the fight choreographers or budget for it. That's fair. But how I, do you then not I, I, go, how, like, if it's, because Netflix made both of them, how do they not just go get the same people? Because those guys, I don't know. if you, if you, you guys weren't watching when these were coming out, to be fair, Daredevil was getting pumped out every year. Like, the, it was Daredevil season one, Daredevil season two, then the same people were moved on to do Defenders, then Daredevil season three. So I don't, I think those guys were busy doing that, yeah. and they didn't hire any other guys. It's not... Action stuff's not the same back then. Like, Daredevil was revolutionary at the time. However, now we're getting John Wick, fucking nobody. Facts, we're getting both, yeah. Like, there's a bigger uptake in guys who are, you know, choreographers and shit for action scenes who are great. At the time, it really was just the Daredevil guys that were doing shit like that. Yeah. The only one that I watched, like, as it was coming up out was Jessica Jones, and there's not really action, action in that one. So, um, going back to that point, though, uh, yes there was a lot of cuts and yes it is not comparable to daredevil's action i will say the kill scenes of when they're actually killing people and i'll touch on this uh when we cover the last two episodes especially were really really good um i thought i thought the gruesomeness and the gore the gore in this show was fantastic there was a couple times where i almost needed to just like not look that was I'm I'm not pussy like that, but I mean I enjoyed pretty much all of it. I thought some of it was a little much, but then there were certain things I was like, that's solid. I think yeah. you can do gore like that, but it just do it for more meaningful scenes. There was like, only one that I thought was not meaningful and kind of gruesome for no reason. That's when Frank fucking beheaded a dude. <laughs> yeah, that was I don't know why he did that or how he did that so fast, but word. <laughs> yeah, that was the only one that I was like, uh huh. He, he put a grenade on it and rolled it at him. Yeah. That was There's like bananas. no need for that one. Um, yes. Go for it. Oh, I was going to start transitioning to the last two episodes, but if you got more. Oh, yeah, I got a little bit more. Uh, back to Billy as a villain. I will say I'm probably a bigger Billy villain fan than you two are. I, I think he's a very compelling villain. And the, it, the moment for me the first time watching this was the bathtub scene. Um, cause I was like, this dude really just killed like Madonna's partner and now he's comforting her in her own blood in a bathtub. That was psycho. I wrote that, that down. That shit, that, that shit was dude. crazy to me. And that's why I was like, this dude's actually a compelling villain. Cause I was like, that's some psychopath shit. All right. I enjoyed, I think what said it for me to be like, he's interesting as a character, but maybe not entertaining was the fact of his mom and the drugging up that he was doing to her. And having yeah. her isolated in, like, you know, a hospital like that. Because you see him always say he's an orphan. So I'm guessing that he went and found her afterwards or something like that. And then this is what he's doing to her for retribution kind of thing, too. 
I don't or remember. If I'm gonna be honest, that would well they don't I, they don't they don't discuss it in the season like they don't they, not this season it. no I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna agree with with your logic there Reek um, <clears throat> I don't so my problem with Billy is again like I said earlier uh, that I've seen this before however I think you guys have made some good points and I think they did this kind of arc better than a lot of other ones have where you get the just pure insanity of Billy as a character. <laughs> with his mom with the bathtub scene like that stuff was i I don't even i'm trying to think of the right words to describe it but like the bathtub scene was nuts to me for the same exact reason eli like how do you go like he sat there knowing damn well he just killed her partner yeah and like not even not even quick just like violently and and then he is pretending to care that was also insane. Nadani's a dumb fuck when he describes how he killed him to her. You guys noticed that during the season? No, I didn't. No. He says he says how you know he died or whatever. He's like, well, how does he have the gun and let that guy kill him like that? <laughs> he says that to her. Yeah, and she and she kind of goes like, hmm? and then she's like, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. You know. The funny part about the funny or fucked up part about the season, you can pinpoint the exact moment he decides he's gonna kill Frank's family. Yeah. In episode 13, they're all sitting down having a great time at the carnival, having a good time. You know, they're all shooting the shit like New Yorkers do because, you know, hey, we bust some balls. You know, that <laughs> shit. shit. And then they're like, you know, I'm named after Billy the Kid. You know what I mean? The most notorious gangster ever. Boom, boom, boom. And then the, his daughter, nuclear fucking response. Oh, God, dude. Dude, that was. <laughs> that, I told you, that's the moment he's like, I'm going to fucking kill all of you. <laughs> She was like, she was like, well, Billy, if you're an orphan, how do you know you're named after Billy the Kid? And he goes, like, you can see him like snap, like you see yeah. something in his yeah. brain, just go, Doosh. he's like, you're dead. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. I wish that was the scene in the last fight. He goes, Frank, or more like New York. He goes, Frank, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna kill you and your fucking daughter when she said that shit about me being Billy the Kid. <laughs> like, God damn it, so bro. funny. He really just gave himself his own lore, bro. Like, that? <laughs> that was like the most loser shit ever, bro. Yeah, my name is Enrique because I'm named after Enrique Iglesias because I'm an international superstar. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's like, thanks ass, for though. the backstory origin story, my head ass fucking stupid. God, he gave himself his own fucking backstory. It's like you're giving someone their own nickname, bro. It's like, well, what's You've caught me De- monologuing. What's your nickname? Death Reaper 3 because I murder <laughs> everyone and I kill the place. <laughs> like, Stupid. Goofy ass. Goofy yeah, well. ass ability. <laughs> um, episode 12 uh, was the whole Frank in the chair getting tortured scene. Oh, jeez. Um, so I don't like torture scenes, right? Me but too. I love this shit. Like, this is one of my favorite moments in the entire show. Both seasons. I'm going to need you to explain this in a little more depth so I don't have to start worrying about you. So the build up, oh yeah, that's fair. The build up of Frank just getting hit to, you know, his visions of, you know, him and his wife because he's trying to think of something better than, you know, because he's in and out of it, uh, in and out of consciousness. But by the way, he has that Max Holloway chin because what the fuck? <laughs> like, ate them. <laughs> he, he was eating those punches, bro. But just basically the build up of uh, Rollins coming at him to where he just wants to kill him, but not to the point that like he's not breathing anymore just over and over again and frank taking it taking it and finally getting free out of the chair and just absolutely obliterating him like was just a huge payoff for me personally okay Okay. well let me tell you this right i would have loved this if rollins probably wasn't the worst villain we've ever seen since meacham yeah i will 100 percent agree with that didn't care about him he was actively annoying me every time he was on screen the justification he gave, didn't he, he didn't even sound like he believed his own justification no, for the CIA. I, I do agree with you. It just felt so goofy, and like he didn't really do anything. And he was supposed to be, he was the big, the greater evil, but he wasn't the big bad. If that makes right. sense. Yes. No, I mean I had so said that I earlier felt, too. I, I wanted more satisfaction when he died. Yeah, I found myself hollow. I was like, he got him. Cool. I didn't really feel an emotional investment. Instead, I found myself more entertained by by Billy. 
right? Because that was another characterization yes. moment for Billy, because he purposely let Frank go to kill him because he was pissing him off at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so that, to me, is more of a Billy scene than a Frank scene. That's fair. And uh, I, I, I think characterization-wise, I agree with you. I think it was better... <sighs> I think entertainment value, it was better for Frank. Yeah, hundred percent. It was like that was his closure for like the whole what he that was his closure for what he did in Afghan. Right. And also, I'm pretty it, sure this is the dude that had his family killed. It is. They said that. Like, it is. Lot. Yeah. So, I get it. Um, I'm with Reek on on Rollins. This dude was a terrible villain. My main thing was really just. What did he himself do in this show? You know, it's like, okay, so we know he's the one who's responsible for this stuff, but it's not like he ever really did anything himself in this I mean, show. They kind of hinted at that. I'm not defending that point because I 100% agree with you and he is a terrible villain. But to that, they did explain earlier, like, oh, yeah, he's just the man up above everybody else telling people what to do. So guys like that directly says it to Billy. (laughs) Exactly. And guys like that, like you don't really see them get their hands dirty, you know, and like they say that too. So to see them actually in action is just kind of a afterthought. Well, I've seen it done better. That's, that's just the thing. I, I mean, that's fair, but I'm just, like I said, I'm just saying like, with dudes like that, that are in control, you're not gonna see them in a real life situation, I guess. Cause I mean, there, this show is trying to be somewhat realistic, um, to get their hands dirty like that. Cause they're just, they got guys for that. Right. Even Billy, man, he had the fucking, I mean, he ran with them. Those dudes at, uh, what was it called? At, not Atlas. It fucking, Atlas. uh, Anvil. Oh, Anvil. Anvil. Yeah. Thank you. Atlas is the call of duty fucking one. <laughs> uh, the, he, he ran with those dudes, uh, and he killed those dudes, um, from Anvil. But usually those dudes, got dudes you know yeah no that's that's a good point so I'll, I'll give you that point he yeah but i'm glad we can agree that rollins sucked i'm maybe no, curious sucks. about the continuity in the comics because I, I know you guys aren't super into ever, all the comics and shit but in iron man there's a company called hammer and yeah this is called anvil i'm not sure if they're supposed to be like they couldn't get the rights to hammer or they already used hammer in uh, iron man 3 so they didn't want to use it again or whatever but I've really got super vibes from Hammer with an Anvil stuff. That makes a That's lot fair. of sense, and I remember that very specifically, so I, I understand what you're saying. My thought when you say that now is maybe they were supposed to be related in some way, but that probably doesn't make any sense. Well, it, it does because uh, the Netflix stuff was told not to use anything from the MCU at the time. Oh. Because they didn't have the rights to it. That makes more sense. Though. Yeah, they only had the rights to the shit that they had rights to, which was Daredevil and stuff. Netflix had a little bit. Fox had a little bit. Okay. You know, yeah. and now everybody has everything. Disney has everything. Right. Okay. Because fuck the mouse. Yeah. <laughs> the mouse wants to devour the world. So I'm going to have a. This is going to be on a hot take oh god here we go i wasn't very satisfied by that final fight really really fuck the final moment i was satisfied with with the mirror but okay okay up to okay. that i was not interested in it felt that's fair i just when you use guns like that it's always going to be hard to depict a back and forth fight via gun that's fair because one bullet can change everything so yeah. you it's going to end either being A, their bullet sponges, or B, the guns are up until the finale, which is the hand-to-hand, and then you guys finish it there, right? Okay. It's pretty yeah. much what happens in every first-person shooter game ever, is that they know guns aren't satisfying, so they have you drop the guns in the final like section, and you guys start right. hand-to-handing and shit right. like that. Right, Which they do, and I enjoyed the hand-to-hand, but as far as the gunplay, you know, everyone running in, you had the hot tag from the Thani. You know, she came in, and then you had the two random hostages, and blah, blah, blah. That was the part I, that kind of kept me from enjoying it as much, was just randomly having hostages. Yeah, I didn't really care for that either. It doesn't make any sense, because Frank doesn't even, like, Frank cares about people, he doesn't care about people like that. Exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, he's like, whatever, bro. Like, they yeah, probably could have died, and it would not have affected him at all. He would have been mad, but he wouldn't be like, my whole life is <laughs> fucked. Exactly. You know? Yeah. I, uh... 
I, I was questioning it at first when he said he didn't enjoy it, but I 100% see what you're saying because the hand to hand here is probably my favorite moment in the show, first season at least. I don't remember the second season, but that hand to hand, the mirror was definitely by far my favorite moment in the show. I wrote down right after the mirror, like he rubbed his face against a broken mirror. I was like, oh. that's some diabolical shit. It was. Yeah. <laughs> diabolical yeah. is the best word I could find for it because, like, <laughs> That's just like that's not even a fuck you. That's gonna fuck you up, but it's not gonna kill you like that. Yeah, dude. That's just, just gonna... going to fuck you up, and that was yeah. like Frank's whole thing. It's like I'm going to fuck you up. Yeah, that was I mean, one of literally, those that I had trouble like keeping on the screen watching. for that because that was just I God. all I felt some 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 pain from that. Just like whole. Shit. I, I mean, tried dude. my hardest to imagine how that would feel like. I was like, hmm, dude, what, oh what my God, like? yeah. I mean, I like, that it, was and, and in that he, I mean, he says to him, "Every time you look in the mirror, I want you to see me." Like, and that's why he'll be back in season two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. But I mean, uh, to that same point, I mean, you can't, and this is why you can't have Punisher not R rated. Um, and this is why people would outrage if Disney does something different if they were to ever do a Punisher thing again, is because you just can't have that character not do stuff like this. I mean, that's just not his character. So it's better just not, not have it than pussify him. To, I read a for, lot of people say that Gore was too much for them on certain reviews. Really? Yeah, I was I went around to just check about what the general consensus around this season was. A lot of I people, mean, it depends. People, the, the regular people enjoy it. Critics were like, eh. So it, that's, of course, going to happen. But I was curious what the, the, the negatives and the pros were. And they were like, it was good. Just some of the politics were bad, which... They were fair. They were. Yeah, they were, the, some of the politics were goofy as fuck with what they were trying to say with it, and then it was the gore was the other point of contention that kept coming up, and I was like, yeah, I didn't see it being an issue, especially because a lot I, of times it felt it felt pointless. You know, yeah. I don't even know. I love gore as much as the next guy. I play fucking Doom. I play Gears of War and shit. Like, dude, I love that shit. But sometimes you got to have a purpose for it, and I didn't feel like any of the purpose for the gore was really there until. He got his hands on motherfuckers like Rollins and uh, Billy. The shit he okay. did, like I said, the Billy made sense, justifiable. Yep. I didn't have yep. a problem with it. I was like, cool, that's what's up. You know, just someone like the head, the beheading of the one guy. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, yeah. He's never yeah. done that. I agree. And even like they made a comment like, what are you desecrating bodies, Frank? He's like, I don't do that shit. Yeah, he cut a dude's head off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, I'm just curious. It's like sometimes they're working against themselves there. No, I, I agree. And I think a lot of people probably, uh, I can't speak for people but um i think a lot of it too is this is a marvel show you know people are used to marvel stuff and so when they see gore like this which is unlike any marvel thing uh it's just it's different you know so it might be a lot for some people i mean like you like me like tristan in some aspects possibly i mean we've played games we've seen stuff like this but people that are watching marvel content some of them might might not have and might not be prepared for something like this so i think that might be a big point of contention as well to your point something i never saw at the time when i was watching daryl but i saw back now was that some people didn't like the grittier tone and didn't like the action and violence that took place in that series okay. which i was really? like that's insane to me like i just right. I, was, I loved it and enjoyed it i didn't expect someone to be like yeah i didn't like that shit and i was confused i was like i guess yeah like you're right marvel fan base they want kind of the more cheerier shit Right. And I exactly. guess, I guess I like Daredevil because I'm a DC guy. Like as far as comic books, I go out of my way to read DC comics. You know? I enjoy Mar- I enjoy Marvel stuff, of course, but I enjoy the grittier shit, like a Wolverine and me stuff too. like that. Me okay. too. Old Man Logan, shit like that. So it makes sense for me to like this and then them to not like it. You know what I mean? I agree with you. Yeah. But yeah, shout out shout out to Marvel fans. Y'all are uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> there's different types, man. There's the Disney's. There's the old school Marvel fans. There's the the Netflix show of Marvel fans. There's just so many different aspects of Marvel right now. Um, and that's all thanks to rights. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fucking everything up because people want to you abuse properties for money. Yep. <sighs> but yeah, I I think like I said I don't think Punisher was bad by any means. I just think that it was an interesting show that could have been done a little bit better, but I enjoyed it overall. Also, hey man, John Bernthal looks good with the long hair beard combo. I don't think you had True. to give him the American History X cut to make like the point that he's the Punisher across. 
I agree. I, agree. I like the the beard and long hair actually. Just the grizzled like, look as a whole. You didn't have to give him the American History X buzz fade. <laughs> like <laughs> we would have been fine without that, my man. <laughs> but you know, gonna make him look comic accurate. Uh, so I got a number for you. Okay. It's gonna be a number you guys probably won't like. Okay. Probably, but I mean Six. I understand. Oh, that's actually a number I thought you were gonna put. Same. Above average, solid show. I don't think it went to great tier. It went to god tier. Six sounds fair to me. It's fair. I was um, I, Tristan, uh, go for it. You already I, said I, six. I was gonna so. say six and a half. Honestly, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it was amazing. Um, <clears throat> like it, it had it had parts I liked. It had parts that were good. There was a few too many things that weren't great to me, and then. Not a lot of things went above and beyond, kind of as Rick said. So, still above average. That's fair. Um, I honestly I don't remember after season one because I re- I talked to you guys about watching this after I've seen the entire show, so I don't know what my season one review would have been. So I'm just gonna kind of go off what I know and what I saw watching it again. Uh, I'm gonna give it an eight because I really enjoyed this show and I really like Punisher the character and John Bernthal. Um, so yeah. And I, and like I said, I really like Billy Russo as a villain. Disclaimer. Eli's a big actors guy. Like once you're his boy, you're his boy. Yeah, that's, that is also true. That is also true. <laughs> so I just want to put that out there. We had this talk oh, with you and McGregor a couple yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, no. Yeah. Ewan and fucking John Bernthal are my guys, bro. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You, you always let it be known. Like, Oh yeah. I'm not trying to say I'm not biased. I am a hundred percent biased. But yeah, so, you know, I think it's worth a watch if you enjoy the Netflix Marvel stuff. Uh, if you don't, I wouldn't, it's probably not for you to, at best, you know. If you like, if you liked all of, if you like Luke Cage and Iron Fist, <laughs> this was fine. Like, yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, if you, you like Luke Cage, right. if you like Luke Cage and Iron Fist, you'll love this one. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know who liked Iron Fist and the people just, who liked Luke Cage might have been insane. That's <laughs> Absolutely, Jessica Jones is a good one though. I would Jessica very Jones much and Daredevil are the peak of. What very much recommend these three. Hell yeah! 